What's up everyone? Today we're going to analyze a portfolio from one of you, a subscriber. A week or two ago, I received an email from a subscriber asking me for some tips about his investments, how we can optimize his portfolio and how we can reach the financial goals he has set. And I said, why not? If it might be helpful for other people, why not make a video about it? To be exact, my inspiration for these kind of videos comes from Humphrey Young, another finance YouTuber that I suggest you all to check out because it's really great and he has, well, just a little bit more subscribers than me. Well, come on, Rick, one day you'll get there. Today's subscriber is 37 years old. He has a wife, a kid, and lives in Greece, which if you haven't seen, is a wonderful European destination everyone should visit. He's a Navi SEAL from the Hellenic Navi, and together with his wife, he makes 36,000 euros, which after tax becomes 31,000 euros. This number might sound really low for the American viewers, but even if one dollar is valued almost one euro, in most European countries, both incomes and cost of living are lower than the US. Our friend's financial goal is to reach a portfolio of 200,000 euros in 20 years. And if you're listening, my friend, not only you're going to achieve that, but if you do everything right from now on, you're going to achieve three, four times that in the same time frame. So don't worry. Other than his financial goal, he asked me four more questions that we're going to answer today. He asked me how can he invest smart and make good decisions without risks. He asked me if it's too late to start investing now considering his age and the fact that he's a beginner. He asked me how he can organize himself better to be more structured in his finances and which tools I suggest for European investors to keep track of their portfolio. When it comes to expenses, our friend has some necessary expenses and some discretionary ones. His musts are 300 euros for the house loan, 30 euros for TV, 30 euros for phone, 14 euros for Netflix, 250 euros for groceries, 250 euros car loan, 70 euros electricity bills, 80 for gas for the car and for the motorbike, for a total of 1,024 euros. His wants instead are 60 euros for junk food, I guess McDonald's for the most part, then 100 euros eating out with his family, 30 euros games and presents, and 30 for fitness. I know that fitness is a healthy thing, but I still consider it a want since you can train home without paying a gym membership. So, sum him up, our friend with his wife earns a total of 2,583 euros per month net, which is 31,000 divided by 12, and spends 1,024 euros on average for his necessities and 220 for discretionary. Before moving to his investment portfolio, I want you to notice that if everything he told me is precise, our friend saves a grand total of 51.8% of his income every month, which is already impressive. I'm going to assume that he didn't tell me all these real expenses because there are so many discretionary ones that don't really come up every month, but still, my first feedback is that having around 50% saving rate is already a wonderful result. Moving to the portfolio, our friend has a total of around 4,500 euros and they're mostly single stocks, with a total number of 30 positions, and within these 30 positions there are only two ETFs. The S&P 500 from Vanguard with 408 euros and 9.1% weight, and a Nasdaq 100 ETF from X-Trackers, which is basically like QQQ. The first thing that I noticed and my dear friend, if you're listening, this is important, is that it kind of looks like our friend went fishing with every stock that people talk about on YouTube. It does remind me a lot of how I invested in my beginnings, and I was wrong, of course, but I understand that it's normal at the beginning that you want to build a big portfolio to have that feeling that, that you're not leaving any door closed. It's not always wrong to invest in so many single stocks and no ETFs, but this kind of investing style is more complex, it requires tons of work on your side, and a lot of stomach because you're going to have stocks losing 40%, 50% at some point. And it's really, really hard to have diamond hands at that point. Our friend here started investing not long ago, so I can only assume that he had a lump sum saved and he started investing it in stocks. I'm pretty sure that he didn't do his due diligence on these stocks. I mean, most of the first are known names, so more or less on the long term, you shouldn't lose with them. But I see here some critical stocks that I'm gonna comment on later, such as RS Management Corporation, Shipotle, UiPath. I mean, what do you have for UiPath, my friend? Then Realty Income, Clearway, Altria, Devon, Bristol, Ebara, Main Street Capital, Cube, even Pfizer. And mind this, this doesn't mean that none of these companies is ever going to grow tenfold. Everything is possible. But I mean, if you want to play the lottery, well, then play the Super Bowl. Okay, let's see them one by one now, really fast. RS Management Corporation, a credit, private, equity, and real estate investment manager, 
424% in the last five years, but revenue only doubled and is at the same level as of 2021. Chipotle is a good company, grew steadily in the last 10 years, but honestly, gives zero dividends and it wouldn't be my choice because as most companies, the stock price grew much more than the real revenue and the real earnings. Check this out. Revenue doubled in the last 10 years, net income also, but the stock price grew five times in the same time frame. And this is the problem with most stocks. They grow much more than their real finances in times of good growth, but fall down the stairs in times of bad economy, or if after five or 10 years, they don't manage to meet the investor's expectations. So you always have the risk that you're actually buying an overpriced stock. Now, UiPath is a company that maybe you bought because some two years old videos were talking about it related to artificial intelligence. And that was, by the way, right before the stock took a dive and lost 84% of its value, like you see here. I would suggest you get rid of it right away. Clean energy companies like Clearway Energy are always a big if. All the following companies for one reason or another don't really convince me. Bristol Myers is always going down. Ultra gives dividends, but it's a tobacco company. I don't really like that. Main Street Capital, CubeSmart, Pfizer. I mean, my suggestion here is to get rid of most of the positions right away and buy the S&P 500 instead with the money. In the long term, and even in the short term, I believe you're gonna have a better performance and you're going to achieve your financial goal much, much faster. Before moving on, let me also mention that as much as I believe that Nvidia is a great company and its growth is explainable, I would be really careful buying it now. And our friend has a total of around 9.6% of his stock net worth in this stock alone. And it's the highest position. So imagine you're betting 10% of everything you have in a company that grew 2,781% in the last five years and 157% only in the last 12 months. And all of this in a moment where the price to earning ratio of the tech sector is at the highest level of the last 10 years. Because you remember, Nvidia is increasing its earnings, but should a bear market start because of high valuation of the tech sector, even companies like Nvidia would be hit. Now, this is the total balance breakdown of our subscribers' net worth. We have only 107 euros in liquidity and around 4,500 euros in investments. So in case of an emergency, our friend would be forced to sell positions in order to get some quick money. Remember that trying to build an investing portfolio while still having debt and without any cash reserves is like building a house without foundation. The slightest gust of wind is gonna bring everything down. Since the monthly expenses of the subscriber are around 1,244 euros, you should have at least 7,400 euros in cash as an emergency fund. That's going to be on a high yield savings account or since it's from Europe and it's using Trade Republic, as he told me, you should keep it there as liquidity because it's getting 3.75% with zero risks. By the way, if you come from Europe and get Trade Republic from the link in the description below, you're gonna get a free stock with a value from 10 to 100 euros, so don't miss it. And by the way, our friend mentioned that he spends around 220 euros per month on discretionary, and there you have 160 euros of junk food and dining out. So I'm gonna be hard on him now. Cut it out. Cut it out until you have paid your car loan completely and you're debt free and you've built your emergency fund, which is the most important thing. Looking at the portfolio breakdown, our friend has 89% in stocks and 11% in ETFs. It's clear to me that he needs to start transforming a big chunk of his stocks positions into solid ETFs like the S&P 500. He mentioned that he's investing 100 euros per month on it. And as long as he doesn't have an emergency fund, this is as much as he should invest per month at all. But I would suggest that after he's done with building his emergency fund, which I assume is going to happen in around six, seven, eight months, he should increase his investment in the S&P 500 as much as he can. In the meantime, he can monitor how all the stocks have performed, even the ones he sold if he listened to me, and I'm pretty sure that most of the stocks he sold will have a much worse performance than the S&P 500. So he's going to be happy in the end. All right, our friend and investor also had particular questions and financial goals. Our friend's goal is to reach 200,000 euros portfolio within 20 years, meaning until he's 57 years of age. We're going to use here my compound interest calculator that you can download for free from the link in the description below. In particular, we'll use the reverse calculator here. Let's start from an initial capital of 4,500 euros or dollars, it doesn't matter. Let's assume a 9% rate of return that is an average return of the total stock market 
as a financial goal 200,000 euros and for the years 20 years. As you can see, one would need an average of 259 euros invested every month to get to 200,000 in 20 years by investing in the total stock market or in the S&P 500. If we take our investor in particular, given his income of 2,583 euros per month and average expenses of 1,244 euros per month, with a difference, he's going to have plenty of money to invest and it's definitely more than the 259 euros that he should invest. So, this is the good news. The bad news instead is, the more he invests instead in single stocks, the less the outcome is going to be predictable and usually, above all in the first 5-6 years of investing and without financial knowledge, his outcome is most likely going to be much worse than what he would have achieved if he just invested in the S&P 500. Regarding the second question, how can I invest smart, making good decisions with low risks? I'm gonna answer by telling him that he should stop investing in individual stocks only because he heard of them on YouTube or because he thinks they are good companies, as long as he doesn't have the financial knowledge to read financial statements and the stomach to endure bear markets. Moreover, a good step for smart investing with low risks is investing in ETFs because they allow you to diversify with zero effort and you should have a good portion of its portfolio in the S&P 500 instead of in sector ETFs. Of course, it's true that the tech sector performed better than the total stock market in the last 15 years, but exactly for this reason, I would tend now to be more careful with it and invest more in the S&P 500. And I would then invest again in the tech sector should a bear market come, because I believe that soon enough there's going to be a strong adjustment to the sector. Another suggestion to invest Mars and with low risk is dollar cost averaging, namely investing the same amount every month regardless of how the market is doing. This allows you to smooth out the peaks and drops of the stock market and achieve the average market return in the long term. Another question was, am I late now with investing and how can I learn the way? No, my friend, with 37 you are not late and honestly, even at 60 you wouldn't be late. Every step taken towards increasing your savings, fighting inflation, earning from investing, is an important step, regardless of how much time you have before retirement. You've seen that with just 259 euros per month, you can achieve the financial goal of 200,000 euros in 20 years. And getting back to the table, I wanna show you something. Considering that our friend is 37, let's say now that he takes 23 years instead of 20, namely until he's 60 years old, and that his goal is instead to reach 1 million euros. He's going to need to invest around 1,000 euros per month, not more, in order to become a millionaire in 23 years. 1,000 euros might seem like a lot, but there are many ways to get there. First of all, cutting some discretionary expenses, stuff you don't necessarily need. Second, by increasing your income. Our friend is in the Hellenic Navy. Maybe there's a possibility to progress, train some new skills, and get a higher salary. And if it's not possible, you can still consider starting a side hustle to get some money on the side, and you can easily add 200, 300 euros or more of your income just by working on Saturday on a side job. Or if you're lucky, you can even start something online that in the end earns you more money than your regular job. Now, another question was how we can structure his investing style so that he reaches his goals. The beauty of finance is that it doesn't have to be complicated to be successful. As a matter of fact, the easier the better. So here are a couple of tips for whoever wants to be more structured in his investing. Reduce stock positions and follow the general market with general ETFs like the S&P 500. Automate your investments by opening a saving plan with your brokerage. So this way you automatically invest every month on an ETF without ever having to buy it manually yourself. And third, keep track of your general expenses because until you reach 200,000 euros or dollars, your savings are gonna be much more impactful in your portfolio performance. To do this, download for free my family budget planner from the description below. You're going to be able to track expenses, income, and this is gonna help you know where you can improve and where your money actually goes. All right, the last question was about tools for European investors to organize their portfolio. Usually your brokerage already offers a good overview, so I wouldn't necessarily make it more complicated, but if you want an app that gives you a full overview of your net worth, I personally use Finance Guru, and now I'm also checking out GetQueen to see if it's a valuable alternative. All right, everyone. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like your portfolio analyzed by me, just send me an email request. And if this video works well, I'm definitely gonna make more in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because you're going to find the best mix of investing videos from the Italian twin of Mano Ginobili. And apart from this, I wish you a great day, guys. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.